Medicare benefits. So I'm a social security paralegal. I work for a little law firm out in Encino, California. And one of my sole purposes of my job is to help people get social security. Because social security and Medicare are tied into each other. You cannot get Medicare in this country unless you are getting social security. So that's one step that you have to fight for your life to get Medicare. And that's unfair, isn't it? Yeah. We should just have it. Yeah. So I've been working as an advocate for helping educate Medicare beneficiaries of the benefits they have and educate people who are trying to get Medicare how they have to go through those steps. So I help people that are too ill and injured to work get, med get Social Security so they can get adequate health care. But many of my clients are waiting for their cases to be approved for disability and I can faithfully tell you that they are hanging on by a thread right now. Many of them have financially lost everything. They are dependent on low-income subsidies for Medi-Cal, for their health care, services, and medications. So these further cuts of privatizing these socialized health care programs are making them so unaffordable that it's a death sentence to people. These Americans are desperate to have Medicare. <laughs> Donald Trump is a liar. He does want to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, and I'm going to tell you how that is a death sentence, because I see and I work with it every single day. Before the, Ameri the Affordable Care Act, I dealt with death on a too frequent basis. Before Medi-Cal was extended to all low-income people in California, many of my clients were unable to get any access to affordable health care. They were dependent on free clinics that are stretched to the brim. They don't have the capacity or the funding to help and even prescribe medication half of the time. Some of them died as a result. Many of them filed for bankruptcy because they were unable to pay the high medical bills. These were people who were hurt the most, and those people that were hurt the most were between the ages of 24 years old and 61 years old. That is the age that we are all working. We are, that's the working age. And these people couldn't get health care. Because unless they had a child under 18 or had a dependent, they were not eligible for Medi-Cal or Medicaid at all. So if we repeal the ACA, people are going to die. We cannot go backwards into those dark days. In addition to expanding Medicare for all, I think that California, this beautiful state that we're all in right now, like the sun is shining and it's beautiful, we need to be the example of passing universal health care for all people in California. that Donald Trump was a liar, right? Yes. Yes. I'm going to give you some breaking news. The federal hiring freeze. Do we know what that is? Yes. That means that there is a freeze of hiring federal employees right now. But Donald Trump, lying Trump, said that that would not affect people who work in health care services. So we're talking about health and human services, Medicare. So with the hiring freeze, this is going to create a backlog of appeals of social security disability cases. People who need Medicare, their life depends on it. This means that the freeze is gonna affect administrative law judges hearing those cases. If they, if they freeze hiring more judges, the backlog is going to be so significant. On January 30th, Marilyn Zahm, who is the president of the Association of Administrative Law Judges Union. She has pretty much said that the backlog is going to affect them this way. They will have an additional 526 day backlog hearing social security disability cases. People who need Medicare. We are being under attack by this fascist regime that he has put in his cabinet. We absolutely have to support Carolyn Coven. I think we should write her. Remember that name, Carolyn Coven. She's the Commissioner of Social Security. We need to write her and tell her to resist these freezes. We need to write the Commissioners of Medicaid and Medicare Services, CMS, and tell them to resist Donald Trump's fascist freeze of hiring federal employees. And I, I think one of the most 
inspirational things I heard when I went to DC protesting the crowning of Trump was I heard a reverend get up and speak and he said this to us. We are no longer protesters. Donald Trump is president. We are resistors and we need to resist from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top up. My name is Shira Strongen. I'm a health policy and women's rights activist. I'm 17 years old and I'm here fighting for my life because my 18th birthday should be a celebration and not a death sentence. Here in LA and at the rally for Medicare for All. So what's, what's your health issue? I have a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Connective tissue covers your entire body, so when it's defective, for lack of better words, you're screwed. Mine is most effective in my vascular system, so even though I'm only 17, my body acts like I'm an elderly person and I've had multiple strokes and seizures. So how does having a health insurance or not having a health insurance uh, uh, affect you? It keeps me alive if I have health insurance because right now, like I said, I'm turning 18 in a couple months and I'll be kicked off my parents' insurance and unable to get insurance because of a pre-existing condition. I'm already dying and having insurance slows that process a lot, but it still doesn't stop it. And if I don't have insurance, I will die. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And we are here protesting or, or rallying for the Healthy California. Could you explain what that is? Healthy California is a bill introducing single-payer Medicare for all for everyone in California so you don't have to get insurance based on your money or your race or womanhood or any gender, any issue, that because it is a disabled issue as well. If California had a single-payer health care, how would it affect you? California had a single-payer health care system. I could never have to worry about getting my own insurance. I wouldn't have to worry about paying for college or for health care. I would not have to worry about dying in a couple months. So you, d you don't have to make decisions that, that requires you to decide where your money is going to be spent? I don't have to make decisions that will require me to decide where my money is going to be spent if we have single payer. Any message for Californians uh, who are paying attention to the health care and the cost of health care? This is absolutely ridiculous that this is our cost, but I think what's most important is you can get back and you can fight. I'm only 17, but I'm here fighting. And know that you have a voice, you have a story, and healthcare is a human right and it's an issue for everyone because health is never guaranteed. I was healthy as a child, so even if you don't need it right now, you will in the future. And you might not need it yourself, but somebody you know will. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I come to you today as a proud black gay Man, I come to you today from the brink of death in a hospital bed in Beaumont, Texas to affirm to you that yes, Medicare for All is a LGBT issue. because healthcare is life or death for me and healthcare is inevitably a dis disability rights issue and I am ready to stand up and fight for it. Where are we and why are we here? Uh, we are in Los Angeles, the City Hall, uh, fighting for healthcare as a right. And uh, what is the healthy campaign for California? 
It is a campaign campaign for Medicare for all to give uh, people health care as a human right. I am a survivor. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer stage three in 2012. I had health insurance. I had it through a group plan, so they couldn't kick me off. I was essentially covered, but the idea of being essentially covered is not really covered because your bills, even though you're covered, are extraordinary. You have high deductibles. I remember my parents every single month giving me money while I was going through chemo. And I would sit in my room and I would try to figure out which bill I could pay first, which bill I could leave, which bill I could pay next, which one would be fine before the, health, the, the collection companies would start calling me. If it wasn't for them, I would have lost my house. And again, I'm one of the lucky ones because I survived. You don't have health insurance, folks. You can die. All right, it's as simple as that. You can die. We all deserve to have health care, all of us, every single one of us, and we all deserve to have single payer. All of us, Medicare for all, is that right? Yeah.